So I brought my frames that were each JPEGs and I brought them into this program and I'm gonna say create GIF. I made them in the right order. I'm gonna do it the largest size that it allows, which is 400 pixels by 400 pixels at a normal speed, which is roughly three frames per second. And I say create GIF and I have my animatic. So then I wanna say save to disk and it will save two downloads and it will have the new name, which is freemaker.me, whatever. So I want to make that my name. And this is my sketch animatic. But that is how we are going to be animating with freeware, making GIFs. Because if you open a GIF that it has an animation script in any browser, it will automatically start playing at the timing that's set for it. Now, if I go back to, I can output it a few different ways. And I can upload it again. And I can pick everything. And I'm not even going to change the order right now, but I'm going to change its speed to faster and then create GIF because you have control of how quickly it moves between each image, right? But what we want to get the sense of is we're creating a frame by frame animation where we're seeing each image for the same amount of time, whether it's like eight frames per second, four frames per second, two frames per second, one frame per second, we have control of that. Okay, so now that I have this GIF file, that can actually also work within Canvas because Canvas is browser-based, right? So I'm just uploading an optional animatic. which is a test animation of my rough storyboard. And if you're really unsure how your images are going to turn into a, a sequential animation, it's not a bad idea to, to try that out. You can follow that tutorial. You can see how those, those tools work. And when I load it, it automatically starts animating. Now, hopefully that makes some sense, right, with my notes and things. But obviously, I'm going to want my finished animation to be a little bit smoother. And to showcase, use color, use texture, you know, to showcase the transformation. And I might need more than nine frames to do it. So, informed by my sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and put my sketch just open in preview off to the corner here so I can refer to it. Now I need to think what assets, what things do I need to, to use? Now, over the, the winter break before this semester, I went to see, um, I went to New York City, I went to the Museum of Modern Art where I got to see an exhibit they have right now on the making of Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio movie. How many of you have seen the Pinocchio movie on Netflix? It's excellent. I really recommend it. And it is all stop motion, you know, with some digital effects. But stop motion is really the metaphor that's helpful for frame by frame digital animation. So if I show you the making of, you know, there are different YouTube videos. This looks like one that will kind of show you. When you make a stop motion project, 
you're making physical models of your characters and you're making physical environments for your settings. So you can see here, here's an animator and here's one of the puppets, the maquettes. And here's the little rigging they use to hold them in, in place. And that YouTube page does not want to work. Let's try this one. So here's this little monkey maquette. I don't know why YouTube is being weird to me while I'm projecting my screen. It might have to do with the screen grab as well. But these little maquettes need to be individually manipulated and pasted. So I'm just going to show you some still images so you get a sense. And what happens is you need to build every version of the character you want to show up in the story. So the maquettes can be, can be moved just like you can puppet warp a character layer, but the expressions of the heads can't always be moved. So they'll build a new head for each expression. Just like we'll build a new layer, which we call an asset, for each change we might want in a character or in a scene. And then they also create settings. They create environments to place these characters. So if we look at this, which is, takes place in a church, it's not at all like Disney's Pinocchio. or these power lines, or with these digital characters, or on this stage. This stage is the perfect example. They actually build a physical stage, and then they pose the characters on it. And then for each frame of the animation, they take a photo, and then move the characters a little bit, change out the heads and the expressions, take another photo. So that's moving it from the assets being arranged on the stage into the final film. So that's the metaphor we're going to use. So the first scene we need to build is the first frame of our storyboard. And we want to build it at the right resolution. So I'm going to open Photo P again, and I already have that built. My first frame is also going to be my first asset. So it's my PSD of my emoji, of Bandit here. And I'm just going to keep it on a blank background. Now, how do I make this work? I'm going to first make it the right resolution. So I'm going to get rid of any layers I'm not using. I don't need really any of these background layers. I guess I'll leave the white one. That's helpful. Delete all the others. And then inside this group are all the shapes that make up Bandit. And they're all vector shapes within PhotoP. <coughs> and what's great about Photoshop is I can make perfect copies of that anytime I want. So I have my background. And I want my finished animation to be a square. So I'm going to go to image size. And I'm going to see that this is now 9 by 10 inches. I'm going to force it to be 10 by 10 inches. Just to make it a square at 350 pixels per inch. But because it's image size, all that did is just grow it. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So instead, what I want to do is take the smallest dimension and turn that to 8 inches. And then for the pixels per inch, we're going to do 100 pixels per inch. And it's a much lower resolution, but still perfectly good for screens. This is going to make everything we do as we're making all these assets work a little bit faster. Okay, I still don't have a square, so what's one way I can get a square? I can go to image and canvas size instead of image size, 
and make it eight inches by eight inches, which is what we need. So I'm going to change the height to eight inches, not 800, just eight, and to have it grow from the middle. So then it kind of crops it down into a square. Another way I can make it a square is I can use the rectangular marquee tool, start at the corner and hold down shift, and that will only give me an exact square. Then I can move that square to where I want it, and as that square is selected, then I can use the crop tool and crop it. And then deselect. And that will give me a square, 8 inches by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. Okay, now I have my first asset. Now I know that there's another asset I need, and that's this guy. But if I take my whole Bucky PSD and move it in, it's going to flatten it all. And it just makes it kind of one layer. So if I want all the different assets that come from that emoji that I made, I have to open up Photo P again, just in a, a new screen, just to bring in my PSD. And then, just like I did with Bandit, erase the layers that are not helpful. And this is the one I created earlier in this class as a demo. And you see all the things that are turned on, but I don't need the backgrounds. And then I can put these all into a group. All these shapes that make up this character as a vector. Put that into a group. I can call that group Bucky. So I'm changing Bandit into Bucky. And then this is the trick. Let's see if it works. It works beautifully in Photoshop. I actually don't remember if I've ever tried it in Photopea. I'm going to move this folder. into this folder. Where'd it go? Let's try it again. Make a new blank layer to fit it between. Move this folder. <laughs> I don't know. So that's why it actually, I don't need everything in here. But I could bring them over layer by layer if I wanted to. But instead, you can do that in Photoshop, but it looks like that's challenging within Photopea. So instead, I'm just going to bring my PNG over. Bring it in, right? As a new layer, I'm going to place it and then move it outside of that group. And it comes in as a smart object, and then I'm going to do Control T. And where do I want it? I think I want it about here. So my transformation is going to be basically changing from this into this in a dramatic way. How can I make that fun? I want fire. I can composite in fire. Just like Guillermo del Toro's set needs different characters, needs different lights, needs different costumes, all things to build the set, I need more assets still. So I need fire assets. I'm going to go to Pixabay, and I'm going to search for fire. And I can do all images, and I can do photographic. But because I'm already using emojis, maybe I can limit my image type to vector graphics. And then I see these more cartoonish Creative Commons open uh, types of fire. And I have eight pages worth of them. This one's pretty compelling. Let's open that up in a new tab. Oh, 
and gifts 